Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining our webinar for today. I know it's a Saturday and I really appreciate you joining this session. So we have a lot in store for you today and we would really love it to present to you about the opportunities you can have in Canada. So we are also live on Facebook. So if my co-host, uh, Mr. Josh, could share our Facebook live link. So if you have friends and family who would also love to join this session but can't join in Zoom, they can also watch us over on our Facebook live, okay? So just to keep start, um, things starting. I would really love if everybody could let me know your locations here in the Philippines so that we can see the reach of our session. For example, I am coming live from Marikina City here in Metro Manila. All right, and we have here uh, my co-host um, also, Ms. Rose Ann from Angeles City in Pampanga. We have Ada San Jose from Makati. We have Cara Jean from San Rafael, Bulacan. We have El Mer from Pangasinan. Hi, how is everybody? I hope you're doing good. If you are um, affected by the heavy rains and the typhoon we have been experiencing from the past few days, I hope you're all staying safe. And especially with the ongoing pandemic, I hope you are all um, vaccinated. If not yet, maybe you could have a scheduled vaccine, but I hope you'll get it really, really soon. So it would be really nice if everything could go back to normal and we could start um, sessions like this face-to-face. -face. You don't have to do Zoom anymore. Of course, we would love to meet you guys personally. Okay, so what is the agenda for today? We have our meet and greet with Algoma University. So you'll get to know their representative later. She is a lovely lady. So you will know about the university and what they have to offer. Then we will also have a question and answer after Algoma's presentation. So if you have any questions or if you want to have clarifications about their university, there will be a time for that. So you can just put your questions in the chat box. Or if you're also watching from our Facebook Live, we are also monitoring the questions coming from the comments. Then afterwards, um, we will be presenting about how you can get your study permit so you will learn how you can study and work in Canada with the help of ACN Southern. Okay, now this session is brought to you by Apply Board Philippines and ACN Southern. So we have Miss Pearl Yu. She is the International Recruitment Manager. And I am Bea Barcelona. I am a marketing specialist from ACN. All right, so I hope we all are we are all ready to hear from Algoma University. We have Jaden Sarasulo. She is the enrollment specialist from Algoma. Hi, Jaden. How are you? Good. I think it's a good evening for you over there. Hi, B. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I am doing so well. It is the evening here. It's about 9.45, um, but I'm so happy to be here and to talk to you all. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I hope we won't take long so that you won't have to be too late there in the office. So go ahead. You can now start your presentation. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen now. Awesome. Okay. So again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you to Apply Board and ACN, uh, to all the organizers who put this together. And thank you to everyone who joined today. I'm really excited to talk to you all and to uh, teach you a little bit more about Algoma University. So welcome. So uh, as B said, my name is Jaden Cherisolo. I am the International Enrollment Specialist at Algoma University. So if you do have any questions about um, international enrollment, I am your gal. I live in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, which is in Canada. I was born and raised there. And I actually also uh, went to Algoma University and graduated from the Bachelor of Business Administration program uh, two years ago. And then I started working at Algoma U ever since. 
So we do have a view book. There's a lot of really awesome information in this view book. So you can actually scan that barcode or you could type this link into your URL or um, you could type the URL, sorry, into your web browser. Um, our view book just has a lot of really, really awesome information about our programs, uh, course offerings, things like that. Um, so it's really great to have that information and this is all online too. Um, so it's great. Um, and you could get it right from your phone. So it's really convenient. So basically today during this presentation, I want to uh, kind of describe the reasons about why Algoma, why students should choose Algoma possibly over other universities within Ontario or within Canada, um, and kind of explain why uh, we have so much pride in Algoma University and why it might be a great choice for um, some of the students in the Philippines. So firstly, Location, location, location. So we actually have three campuses within the province of Ontario. So we have one in Sault Ste. Marie, one in Brampton, and one in Timmins. A lot of students mostly um, veer towards Brampton and Sault Ste. Marie just because they have more co course offerings there. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about those two campuses and the cities that they're in. So firstly, Sault Ste. Marie, this is our first and largest campus. It's uh, Sault Ste. Marie is a very friendly and vibrant community. There's a lot of local shops, local restaurants, bars and breweries. Uh, we have um, a lot of nature bodies of water, hikes, uh, students could do things in any season, uh, winter or summer. So it's really great for students who want to be active, stay outdoors, enjoy the beauty of the nature we have, the beauty of Canada. Um, and uh, along with that, we do have a campus in Sault Ste. Marie, or sorry, a residence in Sault Ste. Marie. So that's kind of unique to our other um, campuses, uh, just because only Sault Ste. Marie has the residence. We also have a fitness facility and we have a campus bar, both that are newly renovated and very, very beautiful. So secondly, we have our Brampton campus. Um, so this is a newer campus. It's in the heart of downtown Brampton. So students really get that big city vibes when they're in Brampton. It's right outside a place called Garden Square. So there's a lot of events and concerts uh, and festivals that happen right outside campus. You walk out the door and it's right there. So um, they really do get to experience the culture, which is awesome. So you're really connected to the community. Again, there's local shops, bars, tons of shops and bars just right outside campus within walking distance. So it's really, really convenient. Um, students also have access to a library and they get a membership to the YMCA. So it's pretty cool. Again, it's part of the GTA. A lot of cities are really close by to Brampton. So that, that's why it's really attractive to students. So location is great, but uh, talking a little bit more about academics. Um, so we do offer students a personalized learning experience. Uh, we have so much flexibility within our choices. So we have three intakes per year, one in the fall, one in the winter, and one in spring. Um, we have a co-op option for every degree program program and that's really attractive to, to students because they get paid work experience which is really valuable to employers. I'll talk a little bit more about co-op later. Um, generous transfer credit so if students have previous degrees or uh, diplomas it's really great. Flexible class schedules and along with that we have courses offered both online and in person so, uh, so it's really convenient. Um, we do have a 14 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So that's very, very low. So for every one faculty, there's 14 students assigned, basically. Um, so faculty is really able to give students that one on one time um, and that personal um, that personal connection that they may not get at those larger universities. So that's really wonderful. Uh, we have a very, very diverse student body. We get students from all different countries and we really celebrate this. Um, you know, we do have different cultural events where students can celebrate and share their cultures. 
Um, so that's really, really celebrated at Algoma University. And I love that about our school. Our class sizes do range from five to 150 students. So 150, that's more your first year, uh, lower level courses, introductory courses. And then um, once you get more higher up into more specialized courses, that's when they just continue to get smaller. So still fairly small uh, classes, which is wonderful. Um, and also full-time or part-time options. So students have so much flexibility uh, at Algoma University, um, and we really do try to accommodate all students um, and meet all of their needs. So a little bit about our programming. Um, we do have a few different schools, which are all great and unique in their own way. They all have a dedicated team of, staff, of uh, faculty who are so passionate about the programs. So it's just, it's wonderful. So we have a school of business and economics. We have um, a new engineering, uh, not new, but like an engineering partnership with Laurentian uh, Humanities, the School of Life Sciences and the Environment, Social Work, uh, School of Computer Science and Technology, which is growing rapidly and it's great. And then also other social sciences. So one thing that I do wanna point out is um, if they have a Thunderbird, a little logo beside uh, the course. It's offered in both Brampton and Sault Ste. Marie. Um, if it has a circle, it's offered in Timmins and Sault Ste. Marie. If it doesn't have anything, then it's only Sault Ste. Marie. Another thing that I do want to point out, oops, go back. another thing that I do want to point out is this new course that we're starting to offer within the School of Business and Economics. It's, an, uh, it's a part of the BBA, so the Bachelor of Business Administration but it's an aviation specialization. So students have the option to complete flight school through flight six um, and become a pilot. So they can have the business side while also um, having the, the skills of becoming a pilot. So it's really cool. Um, the School of Business and Economics is really excited about that. And I'm really excited to see it grow. So if students are quite looking for a degree program, they can opt for a graduate certificate also. So again, some great graduate certificates offered. Most of them are offered um, in Sault Ste. Marie and Brampton, which is really, really great. Um, so those are mostly for students who are just looking for that specialized education after a degree program um, or after a diploma, they would still be uh, eligible. Uh, after a diploma too, but just really to give that competitive advantage on top of other, um, you know, maybe uh, job uh, candidates, uh, just because they have that more specialized education. Awesome. So next uh, reason why Algoma, we do have the lowest international fees in any Ontario university. Um, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the fees. So this is just an approximate um, approximate total from um, previous years and um, and just like looking at future years of what we think it would be. So tuition is approximately 18,927 Canadian dollars. Other fees, uh, which are non-academic fees, other, you know, ancillary fees, health insurance would equal approximately 2,000 Canadian dollars for a total of 20,997 total Canadian dollars for one academic year. Um, so this doesn't include, uh, you know, fees for uh, living expenses, like rent, uh, food, things like that. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, so yeah, really great fees uh, compared to other universities. So I wanna talk about living and accommodation a little bit. So. Algoma University does have a partnership with the Canada Homestay Network, uh, and it kind of helps students find accommodation when they are in Brampton or Sault Ste. Marie. So they'll be assigned a host family, they will provide them a place to sleep, three meals per day um, at a small cost. So that's a great program for students who are looking uh, for accommodation uh, like that. We also have residents, like I said, at the Sault Ste. Marie campus. Uh, so we have uh, dorms, single dorms uh, with a bathroom, cleaning services. They all have common rooms for students to hang out. They all have a fully functional kitchen on each floor with a large living space. A lot of students love to cook, uh, cooking um, 
recipes from you know their home country and sharing that with others so I just think that's wonderful um, and most importantly we do have security and 24 7 video surveillance uh, so students know that they're safe in residence we also have meal plans available too if a student just wants to um, get their meal plans through our cafeteria so to talk a little about, bit about fees for residents, so it does range from 5400 to 5900 just for um, the living costs. Students may also opt for a meal plan, which could be as high as 4600 There are different meal plans. Um, and then it could cost as high, uh, or sorry, as low as 7,900, or sorry, 5,500 to 9,300. So it's it's really not, it's a great price. So we do uh, recommend that students budget approximately $30,000 Canadian dollars for one academic year, which includes tuition and living expenses. So um, it's really it's really affordable for students, and we really do pride ourselves on uh, those low fees and being accommodating to our students. Uh, so if students are a little bit questioning on what campus they should choose, we just want to give a little comparison about the cost of living at each campus. So average rent for a two bedroom apartment in Sault Ste. Marie is about a thousand. In Brampton, it's about nineteen hundred. Uh, like I said, Brampton does not have residents, um, but uh, this would cost in Sault Ste. Marie uh, approximately $600 to $1,100 just for that rent, uh, like I previously said. And then for transportation, it would be $50 compared to $128. So still both very affordable, but of course in Brampton, it's a little bit higher just because bigger city, more people, higher demand. Uh, so so it's normal, but uh, still extremely, extremely affordable. So next reason, we do have unlimited entrance scholarships offered to students, which is so great. So to go through a little bit about the percentages and the ranges, so students could receive $500 if they're between 85 to 89.9 final results percentage. Um, Dean's award at $1,000, 90% to 94.9%. President's award at uh, 2,500 Canadian dollars for 95% to 97.49. And then the Chancellor's award, which is renewable for $5,000 if they have 97.5 or above. So there are other uh, scholarships that students can apply to. Um, we have uh, like more internal scholarships and external scholarships. These are all found on our website. Um, so if a student doesn't receive an entrance award, there are more options, which is great. Uh, this is only available, these entrance scholarships to degree students, and they must have uh, graduated within the past academic year for their previous education. So a little bit about admission requirements now. So firstly, if a student's looking for mechanical engineering, it would be 90% plus that they need. Uh, if they're looking for a BBA, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science, uh, Bio, Psych, Social Work, um, uh, or like other like degree programs in chemistry, things like that, uh, they would require an 85 to an 89.9%. All other programs, it would be 80% to 84.9. All right, so next reason as to why Algoma is student-centered education. So um, mostly with student support, we have a student success central that uh, really is um, uh, passionate about student success. So when a student is admitted to Algoma University, they are assigned an academic advisor and they will be their point of contact through uh, their experience at Algoma University. Uh, so they have that go to uh, for support, which is great. Um, we also have a learning center, which offers a math and writing lab, free tutoring, a learning strategist, 
note taking, uh, help with time management, student success workshops, things like that. So uh, student success is very, very important to us. Along with that, we have an experiential learning department, which I'll talk a little bit about later. And they offer a lot of great opportunities in research, um, uh, co-op career services and career link which are all great resources for students and uh, and uh, supports them in being successful after their graduation so we're also very passionate about student health and wellness uh, so we do have a team of health professionals that are here to assist students if needed uh, providing personal or emotional support um, because as understandably so, school could be very uh, stressful and demanding and time consuming. So it's very important to have that resource for students. We have helplines and support apps uh, available to all students, and we have health plan coverage for our full-time students. Um, we also have a physician um, and student success members who may provide counseling or any other um, therapy related services if students do require that. All right, so now to get into a little bit of the fun stuff. So we do value the academic side and the academic life of students. However, we do feel like uh, students' health and wellness outside of the classroom is also very important. You need that balance uh, just to kind of stay sane while you're getting your education um, and really get the full experience. So firstly, we want to ensure students stay active. So at, in Sault Ste. Marie, we have a newly renovated state-of-the-art gym. It's called the GLC or the George Leach Center. It's in this picture, um, so it's really quite beautiful. Uh, so students get a free membership to the GLC. They have exercise rooms, uh, uh, like workout gym classes with other people with an instructor that are all included in the membership, three full size courts if students want to play basketball or volleyball or whatever badminton um, things like that so it's really it's really awesome and it's right on campus. For Brampton, we have a local YMCA that has all the same services it's it's just a short walk away, but again, they get a free membership. Um, so that's great for students. If students are uh, interested in athletics, I know I'm not, but <laughs> they might be uh, more into athletics. Um, if they are looking for something that's a little bit uh, less competitive, we have a lot of great intramurals, I believe basketball, volleyball, soccer, and pickleball. Uh, so they can do that both internally and externally, uh, just if they want to stay active, have some fun. Um, there's coaches who are there to help them get better if they want to just improve their skills too in those sports. So all great. They're a little bit more competitive. They can look at varsity, uh, varsity athletics. So we have basketball, cross country, running, curling, soccer, skiing, and wrestling. Um, if you're, if a student isn't really into sports, it's always fun to watch the Thunderbirds play. Uh, they'll play like right here on our campus. We have a huge gym in the GLC. And if they're in Brampton, they could watch virtually. So it's great. It's a great option for students and a great way to stay connected and really get that uh, Thunderbird pride. So like I said, we have an experiential learning department and within this department is co-op. So this is very, very attractive for students. Um, it's just such a great program for students to participate in if they want to. So they have the option to get paid work experience three terms. So three terms at four months each, basically, and they get credits for it too. So they get paid work experience um, before even graduating. So it's it's just a, it's a wonderful program. Um, uh, so along with that, we do have other internships. Those aren't paid, but still, again, Algoma University uh, gives this option for students to get that uh, work experience prior to graduation that's really attractive to future employers. 
We also have a Go Global program. I'm not sure if students, international students, would be interested in this just because they're already coming from abroad, but you never know. Um, so we do have partnerships with um, 30 plus institutions in almost every continent, just so students could gain more international experience uh, and a more international education. So along with that, we have international internships as well. So students could get that unpaid work experience overseas. Um, and it's uh, also just a, it's a really fun thing to do while you're um, in your undergrad. You may as well take some travel time. Uh, so why not? So uh, the last thing that I do wanna speak about is our campus life. So as I stated, we really do value a student's experience outside of the classroom, you know, making friendships, building relationships, um, kind of having that downtime from their education just because it could be so stressful sometimes. So in Sault Ste. Marie, we have a new campus bar. It's totally renovated, super modern. It's beautiful. It's uh, pictured right here. Uh, it's really great. So there's a lot of events that we host there. So things like bands, performances, karaoke nights, trivia nights, uh, themed pubs, comedy nights, cultural events, like I said. When I was in university, uh, there were tons of themed pubs um, for us to like dress up and then our uh, communications department would take pictures. It's so awesome. And then in, in Brampton, the equivalent is the student center that they have there. So students get that great campus life um, at both campuses. Uh, so I just want to give you my contact information, just in case if you have any other questions after this session, you're more than welcome to send me an email and we can chat. So this is my personal email here. Um, and then you can also just reach our entire team at international at algomau.ca. We also have our social medias here. If you want to follow us, stay connected, um, or if students want to follow us, uh, we definitely recommend they stay connected on social media. And that is it for me. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, again, for coming and for listening to this presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, you have my contact info. And I'd be more than happy to chat afterwards. Um, so again, just thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much for that, Jaden. It's truly amazing to see what Algoma University offers. Now, if it, we have participants who have questions for Jaden about um, Algoma University, we have the chat box and the comment section on our Facebook Live is open. So we actually also have a few questions from our registration link. So is it, if it's okay with you, Jaden, um, can I begin the question and answer? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. So one of the questions here from one of our participants is, do you have a graphic design course? And if you do, how many years and how much is the tuition fee? So unfortunately, we don't have a graphic design course. Um, that is a great course, though. Uh, so no, we don't. Um, we do have other courses in visual arts mm -hmm. uh, that are a little bit similar, but not necessarily uh, so virtual. It's more just for artists and things like that. So yeah, unfortunately not. All right. Maybe they can check out the other vis visual arts program. They might be also interested in that. Okay. Another question we have here is um, from our participant is they are actually taking a medical technology course here in the Philippines, but they want to shift to information technology. So will that be an issue if they want to shift their program? No, absolutely not. So like I said, we have really generous transfer credits. So they would just apply to Algoma University like normal. And then when we assess their application, we would add the option to do a transfer credit assessment. And then we would just ask the student to provide their um, official transcripts from their previous educational institution. We would do a transfer credit assessment and then it would kind of reduce their time at Algoma U. All right. Thank you so much for that um, answer. Thank you for that information. And then next we have here. Okay, so we ha actually have a lot of questions about your scholarship. So maybe you can talk more about what you are offering. 
Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, we have the entrance scholarships. Uh, we do have other external scholarships. Uh, it's really through um, Flywire does have scholarships, uh, Scholarships Canada, and then another one called Scholar Tree. I have some links that I could send in the chat um, that I can just pull up really quick. Um, other than that, we have other scholarships internally that students may apply to once they're at Algoma University. So these are kind of scholarships that are granted on a yearly basis um, to a student of choice after they apply. There might be some um, application requirements such as, you know, uh, references or an essay to uh, receive these scholarships. Um, and then like they could be chosen for those scholarships. Um, so I will put a link in the chat also for uh, more information on that as well, right from our website. Great. Thank you so much. So that would be awesome for our participants to check about the scholarships available on your website. So it's an official information directly from Algoma University. All right, thanks. So we are actually now getting more questions from our Zoom. So let me start on that. So we have here from Gerald. Hi, Gerald. Good morning to you. So Gerald's question is, do you have a PhD in social science? Hi. So um, unfortunately, we only have uh, undergraduate degrees as well as graduate certificates. So we uh, don't offer master's programs or PhD programs. All right. So if you have um, graduate certificates, what would be the closest to the social science program? We do have programs in um, environmental science or health mm -hmm. science. Uh, other than that, we have business related programs and then IT related programs. So we don't have anything that's specific to social sciences or any that are in like humanities, uh, psych, social, uh, social work, things like that. Um, so perhaps it might not be exactly what you're looking for as a graduate certificate. I'll also put a link in the chat to our graduate certificates webpage so you can look at our, our uh, course offerings for our certificates. Um, a lot of students go for the business programs just because it gives a really great general uh, education on more business aspects of uh, things. So if you do have a previous education, um, if that even is in social science, having maybe like a business background as a graduate certificate on top of that would give you a really great competitive advantage, I feel. Um, but I'll put the link in the chat. You can check them out and send me an email if you have any other questions uh, about the programs. Great. Thank you so much. I actually agree on you with that. Like the business programs are very general. They're very versatile. So even if you're like from a different background, it's also good to have like an education in the business because um, in all the industries, there's always a business side to that. Great. Thank you so much for that, Jaden. And we have your next question from Katrina. She says, good day, ma'am. Is there an accountancy program? I'm a first year college studying here in the Philippines for the Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a Bachelor of Business Administration and you can specialize in accounting or you can do a Bachelor of Arts in Accounting. So they're kind of similar, but um, the Bachelor of Business Administration, of course, like we just said, gives you that really great business background, and then you get the accounting certification on top of that, and it's a four-year program. The Bachelor of Arts just focuses on the accounting courses, and it's a three-year program. With the BBA, the Bachelor of Business Administration, it gives you the option to continue your education further if you ever uh, want to maybe do a master's, anything like that. Uh, so I would recommend the BBA for you. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for that. Okay. So she mentioned she is a first year college um, student. So she can do the credit transfer. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what I explained before, the yeah. credit transfer is perfect. Yeah. 
Great. Thank you so much. Um, I have an additional question. So I'm not sure if you're familiar, but the Philippines just recently launched their K-12. So before it was just up to the um, grade 10 here in the Philippines, and we added an additional two years in our high school. So what is your admission requirements regarding the education level here in the Philippines? Would you accept students who just graduated from the old curriculum, meaning they just finished a grade 10 level? So it would need to be a grade 12 level. So if they do have the grade 10, they could even do a like an additional two year certificate or diploma after that. And then they would meet those admission requirements. All right, great. Thank you so much for that information. It's actually very helpful. Okay, next question we have here from Vanessa. She is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Tourism and her the continuation is down here. Is it okay if I will take information technology? Yeah, absolutely. So you could still get transfer credits for that. It would just cover electives if it doesn't cover the core courses. But yeah, uh, IT is a really wonderful program um, and a very popular program. And I, I think that would be a great option for you. Great. Thank you so much for that. And then we have here, um, it's a direct message to me. So I think she would like, or he or she, they would like to be anonymous. Okay, so they say, good morning, ma'am. Can I ask if how many years for postgraduate courses related to accounting? Um, so for postgraduate courses, we have the uh, two in School of Business and Economics that involve accounting. So we have one that is a one-year program and it's just a, a graduate certificate in business. And then we have another that is a two-year program and it's a graduate certificate in business and human resources. So if you're just looking for accounting, then uh, perhaps the one-year uh, certificate in business is the best option for you. Great, thank you so much for that answer. Now um, I'll add to that, um, your programs are the postgraduate work permit eligible, like PGWP, can the students yes. get that? Yeah, so all of our programs are. Great, thank you so much. All right, that's good information to have. We have now next a question from Cara Jean. Good day, is there an architecture program? Unfortunately, no, there isn't. Um, but I think that would be uh, a really wonderful option. Um, maybe we could in the future. <laughs> Yeah, great. Thank you so much. We'll look forward to that if ever you add a, an architecture program. Okay, but you also have like engineering programs, isn't that correct? We do, yes. So we have uh, mechanical engineering and then just a bachelor of engineering. Yeah. Bachelor of engineering. All right. Thank you so much for that. Okay, um, now we have um, other questions from our registration. But if we have participants who are also asking for um, more questions or like follow-ups from your previous questions, let us know in the chat box or in our Facebook live. Now, there is now an additional question also for the dormitories or the residents. So you mentioned it during the presentation, but maybe you could give a few highlights for our participants today. Yeah, absolutely. So we have townhouses. So townhouses uh, host about five students um, and there's 12 of them. So basically it's like a house. Uh, it has all the amenities, a few bedrooms, full-size kitchen, washroom. Uh, so those are great. They're right on campus. Um, we have a new residence that was just recently built. Uh, so it's really, really nice and modern. Um, that hosts a lot of students. It almost, it makes me think of like a hotel room because it's kind of in that format. You know, you go up the elevator, you go down the long hall. So it's kind of a, it's a great experience for students to stay close um, and build relationships, build friendships. So students could get a single room and it will either have a private washroom or it'll have a shared washroom uh, with another student. And it would just be two students max sharing a washroom. On each floor, there's a kitchen. Uh, so students could hang out. They all have a common room that has this huge window that overlooks the entire campus. So that's a super popular place for them to hang out. Um, and yeah. Yeah, if you have any other specific questions about yeah, great. Uh, yeah. residents, let yeah, me know. Yeah, I actually have additional questions for that. So a lot of Filipinos, especially if they have, they're have married or they have families, can they bring their spouse and their children to these um, residences, these townhouses? 
So unfortunately, no. And that's a great question. So it yeah. would just be for the student. However, we do have other resources um, available at Algoma U to assist families with their children or spouses to find places to rent within the cities. Great. So they can do like an off-campus housing. Absolutely. So right. staying on campus using our services absolutely not mandatory. You are able to find your own accommodation as well. We just have those resources in place uh, to help students. Great, thank you so much for that. Now, I mentioned about children. So what if the student, they are bringing their children? Does Algoma University have like an on-campus daycare for the um, like, like little kids? Uh, no, so we don't have an on-campus daycare, but we do have those services externally within the city that uh, they could look into. And we have a student experience department that would be more than happy to assist with finding those resources. Great, thank you so much for that. So that will be a big help to our um, students with their own families. Okay, now we have again a few questions here from our Zoom chat box. Now this is from Paul Ryan. Um, their question is, how much is the cost of a two-year graduate certificate in human resources and business management? Thank you. Um, so it would be the approximate uh, outline that I kind of went through in the presentation. So it would be about 20,997 Canadian dollars for one academic year. So you would basically just multiply that by two. Uh, so it would be approximately 40 Canadian, 40,000 Canadian dollars uh, for a two year program. Great, thank you so much. And Paul Ryan also says thanks. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> okay, now so next question we have here is from Mehos. So their question is, good morning. Do you offer early childhood education development? And the follow-up question, do students need to take an English proficiency test? So no, we don't offer that program. That Programs like that are more often, often um, offered in colleges and not universities, just because we offer degree programs and that's more of like a practical program. So we do have colleges here that would offer that program, but not at Algoma University. Um, anything similar would just be like a social work program specialized with children. Um, and again, that would be a four year degree. So that's where the difference is. Um, in regards to the English proficiency test, yes, we do require that for your admission. I will also put a link in the chat that explains all of the tests that we accept and the uh, minimum grade that you must receive. So I'll just get that for you right now. All right, thank you so much for that. Now, is there no, like, um, for Filipinos, is there um, no waiver for the English test? Because um, to tell you, to be honest with you, a lot of Filipinos, they're actually a bit scared to take the English test. I'm not sure why. But is there any uh, like particular way if you could waive the English test for Filipinos? Uh, so we wouldn't be able to waive it, but um, I, I don't be scared, you know. Yeah, I know. We do have we do have other resources to assist mm -hmm. if you are unable to uh, mm -hmm. pass an English language test. So we have English as a second language, okay. so our ESL program. So if you don't pass, you can take that ESL program before starting your degree. So you can still totally be admissible to Algoma U. You just have to meet that requirement here first. Um, so yeah, I hope that provides some. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. Yeah. It's um, good information to have. I'm not really sure why, but you know, the when with the Filipinos like your English test, like oh oh no, but Filipinos we can really do the English test, okay? So we can speak English. All right, great. So Jaden has shared the link from their website. All right, okay. Next question we have here from Vanessa. Um, her question is, may I know how much it costs to get a house if I will bring my family? So maybe like a ballpark amount of um, off-campus housing. So if you want to purchase a house, uh, I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but uh, our housing market has increased since 
um, coronavirus hit, but I believe it's slowly making its way back down now, uh, now that uh, the pandemic is kind of slowing down also and people are getting more vaccinated. So if you asked me a couple months ago, I would have said it's very high, but um, it's becoming a lot more manageable now. Uh, so I would say ballpark around one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand um, dollars for a home to purchase in Sault Ste. Marie. In Brampton, that would be higher again, just because it's a bigger city. However, you can live on the outskirts of the city and commute in. Um, housing would be a little bit cheaper as opposed to living right in the heart of the city. Uh, but a few hundred grand is wow. what the ballpark is. To rent, I would say about uh, 1,500 um, per month. All right. Thank you so much for that information. Okay. Um, next question we have here is from Danica. And their question is, are part-time jobs limited to 20 hours per week? So there are uh, restrictions on part-time jobs for yeah. international students just because of visa and things like that. Um, so it really does depend. It depends on the program you take um, and, you know, kind of like your background uh, a little bit. We do have an immigration department who is better to recommend on um, job opportunities once you get to Canada. So your academic advisor that will be assigned to you is actually a registered immigration consultant also. So they can provide recommendations on your academics and on immigration related matters. So once you get to Canada, they will be able to tell you exactly what you are eligible for um, in regards to working. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so that's very good information for all international students. Everybody should be prepared. Those are information you need before you um, come to Canada to study. Um, next question we have here from our Zoom is from Ralph Lynn Joy. Now, their question is, um, are stu the students should go there in the Canada. Okay, so maybe if she's asking if students are required to come to Canada, um, I think this would be great to also mentioned about the program deliveries you have now. If we're doing face-to-face -face classes, would it be hybrid or can students take online classes? So right now, it depends on the program. So a lot of them are in person. So we did require students to come to Canada. For some of our business programs, they're totally online. So students are able to stay in their home countries while, um, while taking their courses if they don't want to travel. Uh, however, I do want to say that if you're not traveling due to, due to visa processing purposes, we do have specific dates that you would need to either defer your intake or um, withdraw by. So if you are taking your courses in your home country without a visa and you possibly end up getting a visa refusal, um, there could be financial implications for that. Um, so I would just... Uh, err on the side of caution for that. However, to go more specific into our course delivery. Um, so like I said, some most of our business courses are online, other courses are in person, and then we are trying uh, at this time to get our computer science courses online also. So it's a work in progress. However, right now, I would say it's a hybrid and it depends on which course you are taking. Right. Thank you so much for that information. Now, an additional on that, are students required to be vaccinated to be allowed on campus? So if students aren't vaccinated, there are accommodations that they can take. Um, they would need to take a COVID test, a, a quick result COVID test um, every single day uh, if they do need to come to class. Um, and, um, and, you know, just like that could, that could be a lot. So, um, there's just some difficulties there. So it's not mandatory to be vaccinated. Uh, there are other things in place to assist if you aren't vaccinated. However, I definitely recommend, uh, just because it eases the process. Great, thank you so much for that information. And I think that is all the questions we have for Algoma University. But if ever the participants have follow-up questions or they have um, 
like more questions, okay? So you can contact ACN Southern, then we will co connect you with Jaden from Algoma University. All right, so thank you again so much, Jaden, for joining us this morning and for, um, for accommodating all our questions. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. And now we are on to the next part of our presentation. Now, this is from ACN Southern, and I would like to call on and introduce my co-host, Miss Rose Ann Taberna, to present for ACN Southern. Hi, Rose. Hi, Ms. Bea. Thank you. And of course, hello to everyone. I am Rose and a marketing specialist, and I am presenting for ACN Southern. So we are an immigration and education consultancy firm since 2005, and we are offering migration and study opportunities in Australia, Canada, and of course in New Zealand. But for the past year, since 2020, uh, we have been focusing a lot on Canada and ACN has, of course, six branches in the Philippines with its head office in Makati. So we have in Angeles City, in Pampanga, uh, we have in Baguio, of course, we also have in Cabanetuan and Gapan, in Nueva Ecija, and for NCR, we have Quezon City, uh, and of course, our main branch is in Makati City, all right? So I would also like to thank um, Ms. Jaden for introducing Algoma University. And for now, uh -huh, let's talk about the study permit. All right. So in order for you to study in Canada, you must secure a Canadian study permit. In other countries, you might know it as a student visa. And a study permit is a document issued by the Canadian government that allows non-Canadian nationals to study at designated learning institutions or DLI. So DLIs uh, are schools approved by the government to host international students. Okay, so now let's talk about the eligibility and requirements. I highly suggest to our participants to take down notes or screenshot the next following slides. So first, who can study abroad? From here, you can do self-assessment. Uh, if you meet the criteria, there's no particular age limit to apply for a study permit in Canada, though you must be at least 18 years old. You must also at least senior high school graduate or if from the old curriculum, at least second year college. Of course, you must have a good health and have no criminal record because medical exam and police certificate are required. And next, what are the requirements? Of course, we need or you need personal documents like your passport or birth certificate, the PSA, academic documents like diploma or TOR or the transcript of record. You must have some form of English requirement and usually uh, this is an uh, English exam like IELTS, PTE, Duolingo and others. And finally, of course, financial document proof can shoulder your tuition fees and cost of living in Canada. So these are initial requirements and full list of requirements will be given after the contract signing with ACN. Mm -hmm. Okay, so an important document when applying for a study permit is a study plan. A study plan is a letter submitted to prove your purpose and it is a brief overview of why you want to study in Canada, what program you will take, and what are the plans after you study like your employment opportunities. You must provide your social ties to the Philippines as proof of your intention to return. You must present a genuine purpose to study and convince the immigration officer that you will leave Canada at the end of your permit because the study permit is only valid for the length of your study program. Don't worry, guys. Um, ACN will provide the template. We will proofread, edit, and of course, give you advice regarding your letter. So, okay. So now, how will you begin with your application? Of course, ACN is here to help you, we are here to process your enrollment and permit application. So the first stage is to sign the ACN contract stating the, our agreement that you are officially getting ACN as your educational consultant. Once the contract is signed, we will provide you a complete list of requirements and documents you need to gather. Okay, so the next stage is enrollment. 
once you are settled on a, on, on a school and program, we will then begin with your enrollment application. So just fill out the enrollment forms, provide your documents, and of course, ACN will forward this to your chosen school. Once they receive your application, the school will issue a letter of offer or LOO, which states the program and fees. Upon receiving the LOO, we have to pay your tuition fee. And the great thing about in Canada, in schools in Canada, you are not required to, uh, to pay the full tuition fee upfront. Just pay a minimum amount and the, the remaining fees will be paid while studying in Canada. Once the school receives the payment, we will give you or they will give us your letter of acceptance and this is the last document we need to start your permit application and of course the last stage is to submit your study permit application forms and documents you will also undergo a medical exam done by an approved panel physician and submit your biometrics at the visa application center once all that is done, all we have to do is wait for your for the permit decision. And for every application is a different journey for each student. So our usual processing time can be between three to four months. But uh, with the ongoing pandemic, manage your expectations as processing and gathering of documents may take longer. Okay, so that's, uh, that ends our part of the presentation. You can like our Facebook page to stay updated on, on webinar schedules. You may also send your or message or email us at for Miss Bea Barcelona. You can message her or email her at ACN Southern 30 at gmail.com and you can also email me I am Roseanne and you can email me at uh, studyabroadacn1 at gmail.com so after this webinar if you have more questions we can schedule one-on-one -on -one orientation or consultation which can be done virtually so this is free okay okay so no fees yet, guys, so you can reach us after this webinar. Okay, so thank you for listening, and we hope we can help you soon. Okay, so Miss Bea, yes, you want to add more? Yes, that was perfect. Thank you so much, Rose, and for sharing about how ACN Southern can help our aspiring students to study in Canada. And now I think that is the end of our session for today. We would like to thank everyone for joining. And of course, we have Jaden and um, from Algoma University, and we also have Pearl from Apply Board. So before we end, Jaden, would you like to say a, like a thank you message to all our participants and viewers for today? Absolutely. Thank you so much, firstly, to AACN, to Apply Board, and to um, everyone who joined us today. It was so nice talking to you all. Uh, you're more than welcome to send me an email and we can chat after the session. Um, and I just wish you all the best and hoping that you're staying safe. Great, thank you so much. And you should also stay safe there over in Canada. And do you also have a message, um, Pearl, for our participants for today? Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, for joining the session today. I'm sorry I couldn't turn on my, uh, my video. But uh, we're always looking forward to having everyone into um, our sessions with ACN. And yeah, if you guys would have any questions regarding um, Algoma U, just feel free to reach out to, um, to ACN. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And maraming salamat, Jaden. Thank you very much. And stay safe. Ingat po. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. And uh, good night to you over there, Jaden. Thank you so much, everybody.